Welcome to this episode of World War II Wayfinder. And today I'm in the village of Stumont. And it was here on the 19th of December, 1944, at around 7.30 in the morning, that Piper, leading the infamous Kampfgruppe Piper, he would attack the village in his bid to continue his journey west towards the River Meuse and its vital bridges there as part of Operation Vaktam Rhine. It was here after Piper encountered the blown bridge at Habimont on the evening of the 18th of December that he brought his forces here and leaguered up outside of the village for the night waiting to attack Stumont on the morning of the 19th of December. Now Piper knew that the American resistance was beginning to stiffen and he was unsure of the American presence here in Stumont. So he waited until the morning of December the 19th before launching his attack into the village. The American defenders were the 119th Infantry Regiment of the 30th Infantry Division. And after the surprise of the counter-offensive had worn off, American resistance had begun to stiffen considerably. So here in Stumont, the 119th Infantry Regiment were poised to block the Germans. The 117th Infantry Regiment of the 30th Infantry Division were around Stavelo, and they were ready to retake the town that Piper had bypassed in his efforts to race to the Meuse. So at around 0730 on the morning of the 19th of December, Piper ordered his tanks into Stumont. In the lead was SS Rottenfuhrer Franz Pram in Panther 225. As Pram's Panther rounded the corner ahead, heading into Stumont, the last remaining US anti-tank gun opened fire, unleashing four shells in quick succession, but they merely ricocheted off the tank. As Pram's tank straightened out on the main road, it was struck by three shells from the last remaining 90mm anti-aircraft gun in the village. The first round hit the left sprocket, the second sheared the 75mm gun barrel off, and the third penetrated the armour where it exploded. Most of the crew were wounded at this point and had to bail out. Now it was in Stumont that some of the most famous footage of the Battle of the Bulge was taken. And it's in the footage that was famously taken here in Stumont. As the attack was put in, that we can see Pram's Panther burning viciously in the street and his crew bailing out. The building behind me is also very notable. During the attack, you can see a Mark IV Panzer move at the side of the house and there are Fauschmjäger lying just behind me with an MG42 trying to cover the street and rescue some of the crewmen from Pram's tank. At that same moment, four Shermans from the 723rd Tank Battalion arrived at the western end of Stumont, ready to push back against the German assault. At this moment, Piper's Panthers buttoned up, the infantry went to ground, and his attack was beginning to stall. Now, Piper was infuriated by this. He was an aggressive commander, and he didn't like his men pausing during an attack. So, he got on the radio to Werner Pochka and ordered him to take his Panthers into the village at any cost. Now, Pochka took that order to heart, jumped out of his vehicle, grabbed a Panzerfaust and threatened to shoot anybody who didn't begin the advance into the village. Because of the 90mm anti-aircraft gun that was located in the centre of the village, some of the Panthers decided to flank it by going around to the northern side of the village along the valley. And you can actually see that in the footage, their flanking manoeuvres being carried out as they're heading from east to west along the fields on the northern side of Stumont. And from those positions as well, the Panthers were able to engage the American spotters that were in the church steeple, take those out, and then proceed to knock out the anti-aircraft gun. Eight of Piper's Panthers entered a field to the east of Stumont and approached the town from its flanks. As they did so, they were immediately engaged by four Sherman tanks from the 743rd Tank Battalion. The firefight was short and fierce, and with the Sherman's fire delaying the Panthers' progress. Shots were traded back and forth, but astonishingly, no tanks were knocked out by either side. Yet despite the lack of losses, the American Shermans began to withdraw due to heavy German tank fire. As they did, the Panthers continued their advance on the flanks of the town, while at the same time, the German Fauschmjäger and Panzergrenadiers pushed through the centre of the town, clearing house after house. Now, for the men of I and K Company of the 119th Infantry Regiment that were defending Stumont during that morning attack, the situation soon started to look hopeless. Despite their withering fire into the German positions, the Germans just kept on coming and they could do very little to stop them. Now, the fighting here in Stumont was extremely heavy and clearly in the past 80 years, all of the buildings have either been rebuilt or remodeled 
but there are still signs of the fighting, as we can see here on the War Memorial in the village, just at the back of the church. As the Americans continued to withdraw to the western side of Stumont, the Germans kept on rolling up each building, going in, clearing it, and moving on to the next one. Midway through the attack, more Panzer Grenadiers in half-tracks rolled into the village, stopped, the men jumped out, and continued to support their comrades who had already been in the initial assault. So clearly it was a very difficult decision for the Americans to surrender to the Waffen-SS. It wasn't something that they wanted to do and they'd already started to hear the rumours of the Malmody massacre. However, the situation was hopeless and the Waffen-SS Panzer Grenadiers rolled up the remnants of Iron K Company here in the village and the men were forced to surrender. Now there's some very famous footage of those men marching up this hill with their hands above their head and that footage was all captured by the Kriegsberg to the German war correspondents that were accompanying Kampfgruppe Piper, and it was all captured on film. Now that Piper and his men had cleared Stumont, they took stock, they regrouped, they took what American supplies they could get, and again, there's more footage showing Panzer Grenadiers drinking what looks like to be captured wine uh, in the village here at Stumont. But Piper knew that time was of the essence. He'd already suffered delay after delay, and as such, needed to carry on his advance down the Omblev Valley. And the next stop would be Stumont Station. So this is Stumont Station. Behind me in the distance there is the actual station building, uh, but this whole stretch is known as Stumont Station. And it was here that Kampfgruppe Piper finished its advance westward. Now, thanks to the delaying actions of 3rd Battalion of the 119th Infantry Regiment at Stumont on the morning of the 19th of December, despite them ending up surrendering to Piper's men, it gave the rest of their division and attached tank units time to assemble here at Stumont Station and to put in a blocking line that would eventually be the downfall of Kampfgruppe Piper. Now after the attack on Stumont, Piper's men, his Panzer Grenadiers and his attached Falschmjäger took time to reorganize themselves and take whatever supplies they could find from the Americans. But then it was back on the advance again. Piper wasn't messing around. He wanted to keep heading west as quickly as possible. He knew that his time was limited now as the American resistance stiffened. So he ordered his Panthers to advance and they came through Targnon, which is a village between here at Stumont Station and Stumont Village itself, and they met no resistance. And traveling down this road, everything was going fine up until the first Panther rounded the corner here because behind me were the Americans dug in and waiting for Piper's men. A concealed 90 mm anti-aircraft gun let out a shot. It struck the first Panther and it disabled it. The next Panther moved around it and it too was struck and knocked out. The same when the third Panther tried it. At this point, Piper was in disbelief. He couldn't believe that the American resistance had stiffened to such an extent. He thought that down here would be an easy advance. It was also at this point that Piper learned that Stavolo, the town that he'd raced through and hadn't bothered to clear and take properly, had now been taken back by the men of the 117th Infantry Regiment of the US 30th Infantry Division. The attack at Stavolo launched by the men of the 117th Infantry Regiment of the 30th Infantry Division had succeeded in cutting off Piper from the main body of the 1st SS Panzer Division. With that, he knew that the chances of reinforcements getting to him would be slim. So what did this mean for Piper? Well, now he was cut off. He couldn't advance forward 
and his supplies and the rest of the 1st SS Panzer Division couldn't get to his position. So he had a decision to make. He needed to withdraw back towards Stumont, back towards Le Glaise, and dig in there and wait for the rest of the 1st SS Panzer Division to try and break through and link up with him. And there's a great series of photos that were taken just after the Ardennes Offensive, I think in the early spring months of 1945. And you can see those Panthers here at this very location at Stumont Station. Now, one thing I like about the Ardennes is there's a lot of memorials around here and they crop up in the most unusual places. And this memorial here marks the furthest that any of Piper's men got during their advance in the Ardennes offensive. So from this point on, Piper and the rest of his men would be purely on the defensive while they waited for the rest of the 1st SS Panzer Division to try and break through to them. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode looking at the brief but very intense firefight here at Stumont between the men of Kampfgruppe Piper and the 119th Infantry Regiment of the US 30th Infantry Division. If you have, please hit that like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Okay, I'll see you all in the next one.